colors weave into a oh hello welcome back to Mega Man 11 and we're taking on the gear fortress this will test your entire knowledge of the game okay maybe not your entire knowledge again like I said you don't need to use you don't need to use all the stuff the game gives you all you really need is all you really need is the buster on your hand and maybe some slides now I'm thinking I should have just did a buster only run I mean I'm also I'm already doing a no items run which I haven't brought up yet um, I decided not to do a no items run because I'm crazy and kind of kind of forgot about the part that this is superhero mode so things are a lot harder um, at the very least it seems to be possible that you can beat the game with without taking damage and while just using the buster except for this one part although that requires I think that just requires a bit of timing the part I'm thinking about is up next but yeah here's what happens when you can when you pretty much have a good handle on your abilities how I can just use power gear and pile driver to uh, go across that gap without having to do any of that platforming and there are other instances where you can just use where you can use the your special weapons to gain um, extra mobility mobility and whatnot and that's what I really love about the Mega Man games in general not just this game like they, all the weapons actually have a use, and you can use them in different, in different ways. But, yeah, that entire thing was pretty difficult. I just made it look easy, but that took a lot of tries. This game is actually pretty difficult. Especially with this boss. The Yellow Devil. Again. I mean, okay. He's iconic, but... Do we really need to see him again? We see his speed gear mode. And... Yeah, it can trip you up, uh... For the first time there's one other attack he he does that we didn't see that's when he reforms after his speed gear mode and he just throws out a whole bunch of he throws out a whole bunch of red slow moving electric balls while leaving his eye exposed while he does it so it's not exactly a good move on its part but anyway Gear Fortress Part 2. Uh, I'd say that this is slightly easier than, than uh, Part 1. But, I don't know, you may say, say otherwise. I do like that they, um, uh, that they give you a Shimo Bay just so just so in case you use up your uh, I feel like it's more so in case you use up your your I forgot what it's called but it's Torch Man's weapon in case you used it all up beforehand I don't know why you would but and here's a new type of enemy and the, these guys will block your path you have to defeat them in order to move on there are a lot of uh, 
big enemies in this game. I wouldn't exactly call them mini bosses, because they go down. I wouldn't exactly call those those defense robots um, mini bosses, because uh, we see them multiple times throughout the stage, and they go down pretty quickly. I don't even know what its weakness is, because the Buster seems just fine as is. I feel like using Power Gear a uh, Thunderstorm there was kind of a waste. I should have just used it here rather than on the Sniper Go. But that's but that's hindsight. It's it's not that big a deal. And I didn't want to use that my last Thunderstorm, so I went for um, Scramble Thunder. These are interesting names. <laughs> and yeah, they have to be able to be defeated easily so yeah, so that you can uh, get through this section faster without dying. Oh wait, no, that wasn't my last one. But now I'm on my last one. Anyway. Yeah. It's just pretty much a remix. Well, not a remix, but you're going up against all the enemies from before. This is the section I was talking about before. You basically have to time your uh, Mega Buster shot in order to make it through. I mean, unless you're... Uh, you have to time your charge shot, not just your main buster. But unless you're not using charge shots, in which case you're insane. Also, also we should probably do that sometime. I, I wonder if someone will do that. Make this game even more hard. But now we come up to the boss. And you pretty much recognize the pattern that uh, half the bosses use speed gear, half the bosses use power gear. This guy's going to be using power gear. And he's weak to rubber ball, as you can see now. And he fires off three lasers once he uses power gear. And they move pretty fast. You can dodge them without speed gear. But I'm already low on health and I don't want to take the risk. He's really not all that difficult. And now we move on to the third part of Gear Fortress. I bet you can't guess what it is. Ready. Oh well, we're at the boss already, cool. <gasps> it's a boss rush! <sighs> We didn't use uh, Acid Barrier, but mainly because it's not that good of a weapon. I mean, compared to all the others in this game, Acid Barrier's Acid Barrier is kind of weak compared to them. On its own, it's pretty good. It brings up a barrier, and you can fire off projectiles, but only while the barrier is up. In contrast, its weakness, um, Essence weakness, Block Dropper can hit things from, from above and hit things that can't normally be hit from the front. I mean, so can a lot of other weapons. 
But this one starts from the top. It can hit things. But you normally wouldn't be able to hit. And here's Chain Blast without using Power Gear. I'm mad here because it activate. It, it ended up blowing up early. And I ended up taking damage from Blackman when I shouldn't have. Ruining my perfect run, huh? I talked about Scramble Thunder before, but it is a good weapon, especially with the ability of leaving behind, um, leaving behind energy bolts whenever it hits something. It can be aimed up and down, but it's but it's kind of slow and it. Other, in most times, it'll be better to just use another weapon. Thunderstorm is like really good. I said this already, but but it's it's one of the it's one of the two best weapons in this game for a reason. Yeah, it has amazing range, especially when powered up, and can pretty much one-shot anything. Torchfire? Um, Torchfire has a very awkward range. Awkward, um, yeah, let's say range. But but it can deal a lot of damage. Just especially when doing when it gets to the arcing point. And it its range gets expanded and turns into dragons. I think it's already been a drag no no no. No, it turns into dragons when powered up. Yeah. Now, Chain Blast is okay. It's one of the few weapons that can destroy the... Um, I, I know what it's called, but I'm not sure about its pronunciation. But those little things... Those little things that move back and forth when it, and move faster when you, when, on, when you get on this level. Impact pile driver is the other one. It's the other weapon that can destroy them. Anyway, um, rubber ball. As I said before, it's like a combination of the rebound striker and the blade weapon from Blade weapon, from Blade Man. And it's good for just. It's good for just dealing damage without having to pay attention to what you're doing but it's extremely weak I only ever use it against whatever enemy happens to be weak into it weak to it and pile driver oh man pile driver deals tons it can deal tons of damage can knock off can knock the shields off of enemies and deal damage about having to use power gear. And power gear just steamrolls them anyway. And you can cross major distances with it. But yeah. That's pretty much my description of all the weapons. Or this has been all of the Robot Masters. And with a final double gear charge shot, Light will guide us to the ultimate fight. See you then.